Hello everyone. Hope everyone's having a great day. Um, my name's Neil, if you don't know who I am. Um, this is a liver awareness channel. Uh, basically, I talk about my fight and what I'm going through with uh, end-stage liver cirrhosis. And I want to talk today about the reality of it. What's it really like living with it? Um, short answer, it's tough. Uh, it, it really can be and this is I try to stay positive uh, for everyone and also for myself I find that staying positive and finding purpose and pushing yourself through is the best way to be able to keep, keep surviving through this and and keep you know doing well however though reality is there are some tough times um, so if you're struggling a bit and maybe you're just kind of going through it or maybe you have a different chronic illness that you're dealing with this video is for you um this one you know i decided to make one more on the real side of the pain and the suffering of it um you know I, you know you've seen me a lot in this these videos and i tend to come on here and i tend to have a positive attitude like i said earlier and I do that for a couple reasons. One, to stay healthy and stay positive, st keep my light on hope. And the other one is, you know, I, I want to be positive for other people as well. I want to show that you can have strength in this disease and keep fighting it and stare it straight in the eyes and let it stare you back and say, I'm not scared of you. You're not taking me out. No, you're not. But reality is, it is tough. Uh, you know, about uh, two and a half years ago now, I was diagnosed with end stage liver disease. I was told I was in liver failure. I had drank for about two years. I went through um, a divorce and a hard situation and I went into heavy depression. Um, and I was, it was depressed, not getting out of bed and drinking. And those two kind of went hand in hand uh, at the time. So, and that kind of led me up to the position of where my liver was failing. Come to find out later on that there was a whole lot of other things involved. My liver had been failing for years and I just threw some gasoline on the fire and burnt it the rest of the way down. That's why I don't have a lot of the other common things like pancreatitis and things like that with it as well that most drinkers have, I don't have any of those things. No kidney damage, none of that. I have lots of other stuff that are not related to the liver uh, that had nothing to do with drinking or the liver or anything else. And I'm in the process of figuring all that out. Um, I got a referral in for that. Anyway, um, but so I went through this phase of depression. Little did I know is that I was suffering from hepatic encephalopathy uh, hepatic encephalopathy is basically brain poisoning. It's where your ammonia isn't being filtered through your liver. And this is, you know, really slimming it down here. There's more technical stuff to this, but I'm trying to keep it simple. Um, it's where the, like I said, your ammonia isn't filtering through your liver. So it starts getting into your bloodstream. That's why you turn yellow, you get jaundice. Um, and you, it can also affect the brain, change your personality. I went on autopilot for probably, I would say good two years, at least a full year. Um, I like to argue even longer than that. Um, it was a rough go for a while. Uh, basically I was unable to get out of bed. I mean, and I've always been the kind of person, get up, go, 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 no matter what's going on. And I was really down. Now, some things were tough in my life and I was going through it and that all added to it. But it was like autopilot. It was like, looking back now, it was like somebody else was driving the car and I was a passenger. Um, a very weird feeling. It, you know, it definitely felt like I wasn't in control. You know, I kind of did things that I wouldn't normally do. Uh, one such heavy drinking for one. I didn't drink for 13 years, not even a drop prior to picking up that first drink. Um, you know, uh, 
you know, there, there were a lot of things. It wasn't just getting out of bed and it wasn't just the drinking. It, it, it was very weird. Like I said, it was like somebody had, had control. I was almost like went back to a child state in a way, like as if I was 18 again or something. It was really weird. Um, however though, so that did affect me. And then eventually I started turning yellow and you know, my eyes were yellow, my skin was yellow. Um, I had all this weight on my stomach. I lost all my muscle mass. I used to be a very muscular person and I lost all those muscles. And I noticed that first. And then I kept thinking to myself, oh, it's just the liver that heals itself. And I did some Googling that the liver can heal itself. And I'm like, I didn't drink for that long. It'll heal itself. So I didn't drink for three months. I did this twice without drinking for three months during that two year process, thinking that things would start getting better and then something would happen and I would use it as an excuse and go get drunk again. Um, but uh, my body started changing. Um, I developed these hernias. Now two of the hernias are unrelated to the liver. One is, which is the belly button hernia. That's kind of common um, in this. The other ones are what's called um, inguinal. Uh, basically, they're groin. So basically, my guts kind of hang where they shouldn't hang. We'll leave it at that. Uh, it's extremely painful and uncomfortable, and I can't have surgery to fix it because I'm too much of a risk. Um, however, though, so I finally went in, and when I went in, I thought for sure that people would just look down on me and be like, you caused this yourself. But I was wrong. Everybody treated me good. Everybody was decent to me. They focused on, you know, um, helping me get better. They did an alcohol test. I hadn't drank in a little over a month at this point in time anyway. Um, there was a tiny bit of alcohol in my system, but really hardly nothing um, at that time. But, you know, I still got the treatment. You know, they put rubber bumpers on my bed thinking I was going to have withdrawals and stuff, which is a, a real thing. I mean, withdrawal from alcoholism is a very, very bad thing and a hard thing to deal with. Uh, luckily, I never had to deal with that. I never went through any of those withdrawals. Um, I quit on my own a couple times. And like I said, I didn't even drink for that long. Um, in my particular case, but I, my heart goes out to those people that did for many years and they went through that process of having to, um, detoxify their body from it. Uh, that probably, that, that had to have been rough. Um, and my heart goes out to you on that one. Um, but you know, but anyway, they told me I was in liver failure and they didn't explain much to me. They pulled a bunch of fluid out of my lung. My right lung was completely collapsed. Um, they pulled uh, two and a half liters out of it and around five liters out of my stomach at the time. Um, so I had a bunch of fluid build up and finally I could sleep. I was like, woo, I'm fixed, I can sleep. Uh, no, I wasn't fixed. I spent the next five months pretty much in the hospital constantly. My right lung kept filling up with fluid and the fluid kept on coming back as uh, uh, infected um, my body was uh, the fluid every time that it would fill up would get infected and I went through this process of just going downhill really quick um, in fact they told me in August of two years ago that I had 90 days uh, you know I didn't believe it I kind of looked at it and said I don't feel that bad. I mean, I was weak, I could barely move, I couldn't get out of bed, but I finally said, you know, enough's enough. And I called the nurse and I said, let's walk. Let's just walk till I can walk again. And we started walking the halls. Um, you know, I had all my tubes hooked up to me and my uh, fluid briefcase that I had, that I had to carry that was filling up with fluid from my lung and uh, the IV pole and everything. And, and eventually I was able to get off the uh, antibiotics and the fluids and all that stuff. So, and that was good. And then finally, um, 
you know, one thing left uh, led after the other, and then other things started happening that weren't related. I'm not going to get into those in those videos. If you want to hear about those, my last couple videos, I kind of talked about those other things that I'm going through um, that are in those. The swallowing issue, the fact that I can't swallow food, I have achalasia, uh, which is unrelated, um, that I have to go through some testing for, more testing for. Um, however, though, uh, but the reality of it is living with any chronic disease is it's hard. Um, the mental capacity to deal with everything, you know, even somebody as cheery as me um, <laughs> can have their moments of downness and they can be struck by depression and go through that. So when somebody says they're fine, they may not be fine. They might be telling you that just because they don't want to worry you. I know I have a habit of doing this. I'll tell people I'm just fine. I'm fine. I'm great. This is just a thing. This is what I do. You know, but reality it is, is it, you know, I'm fighting this battle too. And um, I'm probably excluded from liver transplant because of a couple different things. The other things that I have and also I'm being tested for pulmonary hypertension which is unrelated as well. Um, I got that those tests in October and pulmonary hypertension um, kind of excludes you from liver transplant. There's too much pressure in the uh, arteries to be able to cut that vein to put in the uh, new liver. So anyway, uh, so the mental trauma that goes through it and the financial is just horrible because you know, I'm really unable to work. I tried going back to work. I went to work for about five months and I kept swelling up like a balloon from being on my feet too long and, and different stuff like that. And my ammonia kept going through the roof. I kept having bouts of, of hepatic encephalopathy. They were small ones. They weren't huge. I was able to catch them in time and everything and, and uh, double up on the lactulose, um, which is, you know, which I've explained in other videos what that is. Um, if you're watching this video, you probably know what that is. It's one of the first medicines they prescribe to you when you have a liver failure. It's uh, to remove ammonia from your body. Um, but anyway, the reality is hard. And I gotta say that there is hope. And, um, you know, you don't know what tomorrow's gonna bring. You have no idea. It could bring something bad but it could also bring something good. You have just as much of a good chance for it. Um, I started a GoFundMe and I wasn't expecting anything from it. Uh, I'm trying to move to an area where I have friends because I can't get a liver transplant without having a support system. And um, they would be my support system so that I would qualify for that as long as I qualify for the transplant on the other cases. Um, and also there's better hospitals there, um, better doctors and all that stuff. So I, I started this GoFundMe page and the response has been great, um, unbelievable. I mean, I wanna thank everybody that's helped out with that. I was able to get a vehicle, it, it's an older car and it needed work and I was able to get some of that work done and get it fixed up. and. You know, now I'm back on the road so I can get to my doctor's appointments and all that stuff. And step one is done. So um, either way, whether I get to move or not, at least that burden is over. There's no car payments. Um, I'm able to survive now and have a vehicle to be able to get back and forth. That's mine. Um, so I want to thank everybody who's helped me out. Uh, you guys are amazing. Um, there will be a link to it if anybody wants to help me with the continuing the move. Uh, I'm still trying to do that. Um, the link will be in the description of the video, but you don't have to. The reason why I make these videos, like I said, I wanna help people that are going through this as well. Um, that's my main objective here. Um, so who do you talk to when you're having a hard time? Do you have a friend? Do you have somebody you can call? If you don't, um, you can talk to your doctor because they can get somebody a hold of um, a uh, 
uh, somebody, a therapist that can listen to you. Most insurances will cover. They, and maybe they don't have an in-person therapist. Maybe it's over the phone therapist. Maybe it's on the computer therapist. There's so many options nowadays. So definitely you're going to want to talk to somebody. And it is a scary thing because the reality of it is anything could happen at any time when you have uh, end-stage liver disease. Um, at any point in time, you know, roll the dice, things can change. And you could be back in the hospital or you could be on the edge of, well, you know. Um, but hopefully, you know, that doesn't happen. And when you are going through that, I hope you have a support system, somebody that can listen to you. That's so important to set up. You know, I do have some people that I'm able to call when I'm feeling down or text or message. Not too many of them, but I do have a few. And I, I'm so grateful to those people because I need to, you know, talk about these things too. And I think it's so important to discuss it. Make sure you go to your doctors, you tell them everything that's going on. Even if you, if you slipped and you drank, so what? Tell them because you're bound to a chance that they're good. you're going to go into an ER and they're going to alcohol test you anyway. I mean, I only drank for two years, and the first thing some ER doctors say to me is, uh, so what caused your liver failure? You know, in reality, does it really matter at this moment? I'm not even in here for liver failure. I'm in here because I have a fever, and I want to make sure it's nothing major. Obviously, I'm not having any kind of withdrawal symptoms. I don't smell like alcohol, so I don't understand it. But hey, to each their own, I guess if they feel the need to get into that and then they feel the need to get into that, I don't get mad about it. I just kind of, whatever it is, what it is, you know. Um, so make sure that if you're feeling down, you go into the hospital, you get checked out. It's so important. And be honest with, you, with your liver doctor. Um, if you don't have a hepatologist, I would strongly suggest getting one. Not just a GI doctor, but a hepatologist. You can, I mean, I have to travel about four hours to see mine. Same with the GI specialist. Um, but it's worth it because uh, that's what they do. They specialize in the liver, not just the digestive tract, but in the liver itself. So um, you would talk to your GI, they would get you a referral to one. That is so important. So make sure you do that. Um, again, so important when you're feeling down that you talk about it. Um, don't be ashamed to talk about your disease. Don't be ashamed to bring it up. Um, you know, it, it, this is what you're dealing with. And it's hard on its own keeping quiet, let alone, you know, to speak about it. So, you know, hopefully you have a friend that's willing to listen or a family member, you know, that's willing to listen and hear you out on your bad days. Um, and I'm so grateful to the people that listen to me on my bad days because they make all the difference in the world. So anyway, I'm going to uh, leave you at it here. Um, have a wonderful, blessed day. Take care. And I uh, hope you enjoyed the video. Um, please uh, like and follow. Um, that's a great help to me. And again, stay liver aware.